Hey guys, let's blow some stuff up. Today I'm going to show you how to build a motion template that allows you to blow anything up in Final Cut Pro. This motion tutorial is a little advanced, but the effect is super fun. If you're a Final Cut user and you're not yet using Apple Motion, I hope this tutorial really gives you an idea of what motion is all about. And when you're ready to learn, check out my course Motion Launchpad available at jenjager.com to get you started in Apple Motion. Let's just dive right into it. All right, here is my project browser. We're gonna make a Final Cut generator. And here are my project settings. We've got a 4K resolution and the duration is eight seconds long. We're gonna start by making this project 3D. So let's head on up to add object and select camera. And next we're gonna add a drop zone to our project. So the shortcut for that is shift command D. If you can't remember that shortcut, you can just head on up to add object and select drop zone from this menu. Now I wanna add an image as a placeholder in my drop zone so I can get a better idea of how my project's coming together as I work instead of just looking at this gray box. So I'm going to grab a Final Cut logo and I'm gonna drop it into my project pane, select the drop zone and under the source media, let's add that Final Cut logo. Now I'm gonna disable the logo I dropped in. We don't need it now. And now I'm gonna head down to my timeline and queue up my playhead to the three second mark, select it on that drop zone. I'm gonna hit the O key to tighten that up. So it's just three seconds long. Now you can see that my Final Cut logo is more than filling the frame. It's actually getting cropped off. Under the image tab in the inspector when we're selected on the drop zone, you could play with the scale. However, because of the way we're building this template for Final Cut Pro, I am not going to adjust the scale under the image tab. Instead, we're gonna adjust this at the group level. So I'm gonna select the group that has the drop zone in it, head on over to properties, and let's scale this down to say 50%. And yeah, it is getting cropped off. If I select the drop zone again in my project pane, under the properties tab, you can see that it's applied a crop. I'm just going to disable that. We don't need the crop. Now let's add some movement to our drop zone. I'm actually gonna be applying two separate oscillate behaviors to this drop zone with two different parameters animated. This will give us some options when we publish it to Final Cut Pro for the way we want our objects to move before they explode. So what I'm going to do is again, make sure I'm selected on the drop zone and I'm gonna twirl down on rotation and under the Y rotation, I'm going to add an oscillate parameter behavior. So let's change some of the values on this behavior. Under amplitude, I'm going to set it to zero. And under speed, I'm going to set it to 330. I'm going to queue up my playhead to a second in, and I'm going to make a keyframe here on amplitude. And then I'm going to jump to the end of my drop zone, and I'm going to increase that amplitude to 30. So it starts by not moving, and then over time, the oscillation becomes more and more pronounced. Now let's add another oscillation behavior. Like I said, this is gonna be another option for us in Final Cut Pro. So I'm going to select the oscillate behavior in my project pane and duplicate it. And here in my inspector window, under the apply to line, let's change this to the Z rotation. This first keyframe, I'm going to leave at a value of zero, but then when I jump to the second keyframe under my amplitude value, I'm gonna change this value to 10. So let me disable my original oscillate so you can see what our new oscillate behavior does. It shakes it this way as opposed to this way. So those will be our two options in Final Cut Pro. Now, if you feel like this project is too many steps and you don't really feel like following along, but you do want access to this exploding generator, join my Patreon community. All of my patrons get access to all of my working files from all of my Apple Motion tutorials here on YouTube. So if you're interested in that, head on over to my Patreon community. I'll link to it down below. Now let's draw our attention to the group level here in our project pane. I'm going to add a directional blur to the group. You wanna make sure you do this on the group level, really important. And we are gonna keyframe this as well. So I'm gonna cue up my playhead to the one second 20 frame mark. I'm going to add a keyframe on the amount at zero, and then I'm going to jump to the end of my drop zone here and crank that up to 300. So as the action happens, the whole thing gets blurrier. So that's phase one of our project. The next phase gets a little bit more complicated. I'm gonna start by disabling this whole group right now so we can focus on our emitter. This is going to be our explosion in our animation. So the first thing I'm going to do 
is head to my shape menu, select circle, and I'm gonna draw a perfect circle by holding down the shift key as I click and drag in my canvas. Now the circle, we can't see it because in my project pane, it landed in the disabled group that has my drop zone. I actually want it in its own group. This is really important. So I'm just gonna drag it up here above my camera. And then I'm gonna enable the fill and disable the outline under the properties tab. I'm gonna reset these parameters so it's dead center. The scale is not gonna matter. And I'm gonna head on up to filters and let's add a glow filter to this guy just to give it a little something something. On the radius, I'm gonna change it to 75. All right, now let's create our explosion. Select it on the circle in the project pane, head on up to the top right of the screen and click make particles. Now in the inspector window, we're gonna make a lot of changes here. We're gonna go from point to image. We're going to change the arrangement from tile fill to random fill. In the image source, I'm going to drop in my drop zone from my project pane. So make sure you're not selected on the group level, you're actually selected on the drop zone itself. And we're just gonna click and drag that into the well. I'm also gonna make this 3D. Under birth rate, we are going to crank it all the way down. Under initial number, I'm gonna give it 2,500. Under life, we're gonna make it two seconds long. Under speed, I'm gonna crank it all the way up to 1,000. Under opacity over life, we're gonna want these particles to fade out. So I'm going to twirl down on opacity over life. I'm gonna click the very end of this white bar here to create a new color tag. And then I'm gonna slide down the opacity all the way. And then under scale, I'm gonna drop this down to 25%. So here is our emitter. Now let's check out our timeline here. What we need to do is have the emitter start right after our drop zone ends at the three second mark. So I'm just gonna drag this right to the three second mark. I'm gonna enable that group so you can see it goes from shaking, 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 but it doesn't look quite right yet. Don't worry, we're getting there. So let's select the emitter again. Under color mode, I'm gonna change it to take image color. And now you can see it really goes from looking like the Final Cut logo to an explosion, but you may notice that the size of my Final Cut logo and the size of my emitter do not align. So what we're going to do is select it on the emitter, head over to properties, and under scale, we are going to apply a parameter behavior and we're gonna select link. In the source object well, you're going to select the group that has your drop zone in it, not the drop zone itself, super important. You're gonna select the group, click and drag it into the well. And now the size of our emitter is linked with the size of our group. That's why earlier I said we don't wanna change the size of our image at the layer of the drop zone under the image tab with this slider here, because you cannot apply the link behavior to that particular slider for some reason. So you have to do it at the group level. That's our workaround. I hope that makes sense to you. So we're so close to getting this explosion looking great, but there are a few more adjustments I would like to make. First of all, I wanna apply that directional blur to this emitter as well, because the image goes from super blurred out to really clear when our explosion happens. So I'm going to select that directional blur we made earlier. I'm gonna right click to copy it and I'm going to paste it onto the emitter. Now in my timeline, we're gonna to to play with the timing of things. I'm gonna grab that blur and I wanna bring it to the very front of my emitter. And then I'm gonna take these red keyframes and I'm going to swap them because the original blur gets more blurry over time and I actually want the emitter to get less blurry over time. So I'm gonna take this red keyframe here. If you're not seeing this, you wanna click this button here at the top of your timeline. And I'm just gonna drag this one over here. And I'm gonna have these ones pretty close together. So they start blurry and then they get clearer. I also wanna play with the speed of my particles as well. So we're going to select the emitter in the project pane under the emitter tab under speed, we are going to add an exponential parameter behavior. In my timeline, I'm gonna cue my playhead to once the particles have faded out and then select the exponential behavior and hit the O shortcut to tighten it up. So I'm gonna select that exponential behavior in the timeline and over here in the inspector window, let's crank the start value all the way up to a thousand and the end offset, I'm gonna bring to 40. Watch what happens in my keyframe editor at the bottom of my timeline when I make that adjustment. So now it feels like a real explosion. 
So we're so close to being done with this animation. I just have a couple quick final adjustments. You'll notice that my drop zone has a lot of momentum as it's oscillating back and forth on the Y parameter, but the emitter is straight to camera. So what I wanna do is link the Y rotation on my drop zone to the Y rotation on the emitter. But if we look down in our timeline, I'm gonna close my keyframe editor so you can see here, my oscillate behavior stops before the emitter starts. So what I'm going to do is drag out that oscillate behavior. And while I'm at it, I'm gonna drag out this one too, and then select the emitter in the project pane under the Y rotation. We're gonna add a link behavior. And in our source well, we're going to grab the drop zone, not the group this time. We're actually going to grab the drop zone. So I'm just gonna drag it in there. And so now you can see our emitter, I'm just gonna arrow frame by frame, is actually rotating with the drop zone. So it just feels like it doesn't lose momentum right at that point. And we're gonna do that one more time for our other oscillate behavior. Remember, we are giving ourselves the option to oscillate on the Z axis. So I'm gonna enable that one, disable the original oscillate. On the emitter under the Z rotation, one more time, we're gonna add that link behavior and we're gonna grab the drop zone, not the group. And the same thing goes. You can just sort of feel the emitter just ha has the same momentum as the drop zone. Oh, that was a lot of work and we're still not done. The next thing we need to do is publish this as a Final Cut Pro generator. Now, the trick to this is to be really thoughtful about which parameters you think you might wanna be able to adjust once you publish it to Final Cut Pro. Let's first start with our camera. I think we're going to want to be able to zoom in and out of this frame. So we need to be able to adjust the scale. Now what's confusing about the camera is the scale value. If you bring it down, your objects actually get bigger. And if you bring it up, they actually get smaller. This is going to be confusing in Final Cut Pro. So I'm actually gonna rig this scale instead of just publishing it the way it is. So we can reverse the values and have it feel a little bit more intuitive. So I'm going to drop down here on the scale and select add to rig, create new rig. Let's make it a slider. So I'm gonna make sure I'm selected on this first pin here. I'm gonna hit the start button and I'm going to make our lowest value for the zoom. Let's go all the way to 400. Then I'm gonna stop rig edit mode. I'm going to select the second pin here, hit start. And this time I'm going to make it really big. Let's go all the way to one, stop rig edit mode, and then for my published parameter here, I'm going to set this to 50. Then we wanna select the rig in our project pane and publish the rig. Now, if we select project at the top of our project pane and then the project tab, we have this new slider and it's just called slider. This would be very confusing to future you in Final Cut Pro. You're like, what is this slider? What does it do? So I'm just gonna double click the word slider and I'm just gonna call it zoom. All right, let's start publishing more parameters. On the emitter, I think you're gonna to wanna to be able to control how many particles there are. I'm gonna publish that. I think you're also going to wanna to be able to control the speed because remember the life of our particles is just two seconds, but the speed of the particles is controlling how big our explosion gets, right? If we had the speed be lower, our explosion would actually be over those two seconds a lot smaller. So I'm gonna crank that back up to a thousand and I'm going to publish this parameter as well. And I think you're also gonna to wanna to be able to control the scale of the particles. So let's do that. Before I move any further, I wanna remind myself what I published. So let's select project in the project pane. And on an initial number, I'm just gonna rename this particles. This is how many particles we have. On speed, I'm gonna call this explosion size because at the end of the day, that's really what it boils down to is the size of the explosion. And then under scale, we're gonna make this particle size. And I'm gonna reorder these to something that I think makes more sense. So I'm gonna leave the zoom as it is. Particles, I'm gonna leave where it is. Particle size, I'm gonna drag above the explosion size. All right, let's keep moving. There's more things we're gonna to want to be able to change. Let's head down to the group that contains our drop zone. Remember this group? Remember how we changed the scale? Let's publish this parameter as well. Again, let's head on up to project, in the project pane, and then the project tab under scale. Let's change this to object size. And I'm gonna drag that parameter 
just below the zoom. And then the other things we wanna publish is we wanna be able to choose between our two oscillate styles. So this first oscillate, which is our Z rotation, I'm going to publish this. And in the project, I'm gonna rename this rotate Z. And under this second oscillate behavior, I'm gonna publish this and we're gonna name this rotate Y. And now these are all the adjustments we're going to be able to make in Final Cut Pro. So you can either like choose to not rotate at all, you can choose to rotate on the Y or the Z or both the Y and Z with these check marks. Now let's send it on over to Final Cut. So I'm just gonna head on up to File, Save. I'm gonna call this Explode. Before we head on over to Final Cut, let's clear out our drop zone. So I'm gonna select it my project pane, just hit this clear button. Now we're back to just our regular drop zone. I'm gonna hit Command S to save it. Let's head on over to Final Cut. I'm gonna drop in my generator into my timeline. In the generators inspector, let's drop something into our drop zone and play with these parameters. So remember the zoom is our camera zoom. The object size was the size of our group so we could shrink it down or make it really large. We can increase the number of particles. I always like more particles but your computer may not be able to handle it. And remember, we can choose to rotate on the Z or the Y. So yeah, that's how you can make anything explode in Final Cut Pro. If you're not yet an Apple Motion user, I hope this got you excited to try it. Check out my course, Motion Launchpad, now available at jenjager.com. I picked out some other videos I know you're gonna love, and I'll see you again. Bye.